Have you ever wanted to paint some really simple roses using watercolor? Well, stick around. I'm going to show you how to paint this one right here. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Kelly here. I am so ready for spring. Oh, my gosh. I'm thinking of doing a flower challenge for the month of April, maybe the end of March. So leave me a comment down below. Let me know if that's something that interests you, if you want to do more flowers. Flowers are not my normal thing. I have... Uh, done a few uh, few videos here on YouTube. I did these roses here last year and I had a lot of fun with them. Um, and I've done another one with some purple lavender. We saw at the beginning here with the bumblebee. That was really fun, but um, I don't do a lot of detailed flowers. I really love that soft, loose kind of flower. And you'll notice when I'm painting my flowers, um, I like to not get a lot of the details. So these are really simple roses I'm going to show you how to do. So all I'm going to do is just grab my watercolor paper and I'm starting with these really small little fine lines for the center and using the tip of my brush. And now as I span out with this flower, the petals get a little bit wider and I'm just doing some clean water to spread those out a little bit more. So they're going to be a little bit lighter on the ends. And then I am pushing down a little bit more with my brush to make that uh, petal a little bit wider. So I start with that real small line at first. And I do a couple of them because I give it a little bit of time to dry. So I don't want it too wet. And then once I place that bigger band in there, I go back in with my clean water. I'm trying not to make those touch. I like to have a little separation there so you have the natural bit of the white. So it looks like you've got some really pretty highlights in there. So now I'm adding a little bit of just clean water and spreading that color out. So I'm getting that really nice light pink on the ends or the edges. I'm making these a little ripply. If you watch the other YouTube video, you'll see I did this really fast. It actually, this one I'm doing much slower. I don't usually paint slow. If you've watched me paint, I'm usually like a bull in a china closet. <laughs> I just, I, I think that helps. You know, if, you, if you're if you a painter and you try to do something very specific and, you know, you're, you're studying something and you're watching another painter and just do your own thing. Because, you know, that's how we learn. That's how I learned how to do these roses. I was very frustrated when I first started and... I think that's why I go slower. And now that I've gotten a little bit better at it, I tend to um, I practice. And then I don't care as much. It's not as stressful, I guess, once you don't have a worry of what the outcome is going to be. Especially when you're practicing. That's what practice is for. So play. That was pretty, being pretty intense for me here. And it wasn't as fun that way, I have to say. Once I got into it and I get a little bit more messy, and you'll see when I do the drips here, I was having more fun. So with a little purple here, and again, I am just practicing that motion by wetting my brush and just pulling that paint out a little ways. So think about doing it like little half C's or not a complete C. Just a little half moon. Again, leaving a little white space in between each one. And you can see I can push down with the flat side of my brush just to pop those petals out. Do it skinny at first and then flatten your brush as you come out and lighten it. Great thing about these type of flowers too, not one of them is going to be the same and there's no right or wrong, just like doing some trees. You know, start smaller in the middle, have those little lines a little bit closer together and then branch out as you go along. You can dab a little bit of darker values again near the center where the darkest shade is going to be and then lighter on the edge. So if you guys like this, make sure to click the subscribe button and click that little bell and you'll get notified when I have new videos coming up. I know I, everybody says that in YouTube channels now, but 
you know, if you're new here and you just don't know that yet, it's a very important thing because if you like certain people when you're watching these channels, trying to find it again is horrendous. So I've got a lot of favorites and a lot of uh, bells on a number of uh, artists and uh, even other things like keto diet. <laughs> Because I'm checking that out right now, too. Trying to lose some weight. How about you guys? Anybody trying to lose some weight? I want to be my buddy. Oh, goodness. So if you're interested in more classes with me, I actually have a brand new membership on my website at www.kellychassiefineart.com where you have access to every single course that I've ever published. It's over $1,249 currently worth of courses. And you can sign up for either a monthly membership or you can sign up for a yearly membership over there. Okay, so I've got a few flowers down here. Now I'm going to add a little bit of water to the underneath of these. And we're going to let this run and do a little bit of drip action. Now my friend Lisa Hetrick did this with a lunar moth that she painted. And I'll see if I can find that for you guys. I'll, I'll attach that in the link down below. I absolutely love that drip look. Adding a little bit of purple in here. So thanks, Lisa, for um, sharing your process with that. Um, and I thought this was really fun. I was... You know, kind of into the roses, but I just felt like I wanted to get a little bit more abstract and I f it seems just softer this way for me. So adding just a little water, lifting up my watercolor paper because with watercolor, it will only go where the water is. So if you wet that area and then, you know, rock it back and forth, you can get some of those drips to move down. And if they're not moving down, just take a little water and you can bring them down there. I've got quite a few little puddles here. I'm going to wait to see what those are going to do. We might wipe those up. Meanwhile, I'm adding just a little bit more of the darker color in there. Because that, as that dries, remember, watercolor is going to get a little bit lighter. I'm going to leave that flat. I think those are okay. Those, those should dry all right down there. They do have a little bit of a puddle. So if you want to take a dry brush, you can lift some of that up. But I'm going to let it go and see what it's going to do. I feel like playing today, boys and girls. Just going to go with the flow. Flow. I learned something else today. Speaking of watercolor and flow, there is um, a material uh, that I'm going to pick up. It's called ox oxgall fluid, and it helps um, your watercolors move a little bit more or it helps with the flow i was watching um lindsay the frugal crafter she's actually living in like bangor which is really close to where i'm at so one of these days i want to i'm going to try to see if i can get her to meet up <laughs> i would love to to see her little space in there where she does all her stuff i just love her channel um so shout out to lindsay um but she was talking about the uh ox gall and i didn't know what it was because I never really had a problem with my paint so long, but I usually use Windsor Newton and I use a student gray Windsor Newton and I've done Daniel Smith watercolor. So I haven't really dabbled in too, too many different types of watercolors, but if you have some watercolors and they're not blooming or spreading out and I'll, I'll um, attach Lindsay's video from to today or last week or some somewhere recently. Um, I'll put it down here for you guys in the description box below, but um, she explains what it does. But basically, if you've got watercolors, it just sits on your page. Uh, this is supposed to help. It's supposed to help it flow better. And I guess it's more, you know, for like student grades or some little bit less quality paints will really help them move more. So I don't know. I'm going to give it a try. I'll, uh, I'll let you guys know what I think when I get it and uh, I'll play around with it for you. So I'm going to add just a few more little flowers just to fill in the area a little bit more. I like the yellow one and I like the way that that, uh, that yellow bled down in near the bottom there. We'll add another purple one. Ooh, see that's still wet on the top of that pink one, so that's going to just drip down in there. Oh, make sure you click that like button, hit that uh, little thumbs up. Let me comment down below. Let me know what you guys think of the roses. I also have that watercolor uh, poppy class. That was probably 
my favorite flower that I ever did. That one was pretty detailed. I had a bud and we had the open poppy. So I'll probably do more flowers. I, you know, I, that was always my nemesis flowers, but it's been like 20 years <laughs> where I've stayed away from them. I love doing trees, water, seascapes, landscapes, pet portraits, <laughs> but flowers, I don't know. They just, um, I guess it's just, they're so detailed. I don't know. I'm, I'm liking them more and more, though. And if I, we do that flower challenge um, coming up next month, uh, you guys can give me some ideas of maybe what type of flowers you want to see. And I will try to get them, you know, done. Maybe not quite as um, detailed. Do it nice and loose. Loose flowers are, are fun to do. So I'm adding just a few funky little leaves in here. I just decided I have had some spaces I needed to fill in a little bit more. But I think that's it. I, I like the drips. That was fun. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Remember to have fun when you paint. It's all about the process. It's not necessarily about the outcome. Have a great week, you guys. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.